Well, I like to think a GMO is actually God move over, because uh, pretty much it's scientists, um, you know, messing with nature. Every farmer that buys a genetically modified seed is doing it for one reason, because they know it's the better seed. There is so much misinformation right now uh, about this technology that general public is having really hard time to figure out what is really true or what is not. Hawaii has been a primary testing location of genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, for decades. Many of the largest biotech companies conduct research on new strains for commercial crops and produce genetically engineered seeds to sell to farmers across the country. Hawaii is very important to agricultural biotechnology. Alicia Maluafiti is a spokesperson and lobbyist for the seed companies in Hawaii. What they're really doing here is nursery work. They're looking at the types of crops, uh, transgenic or biotech or traditional, to help farmers the most. By doing that, here in Hawaii, instead of like Iowa, they're able to get three to four growing seasons. After their commercial release in the 1990s, the relatively quick adoption of the transgenic crops by farmers in the U.S. and abroad sparked a loud and colorful reaction of fear and condemnation by activists and the media. They're in 80% of the food we eat, but some say genetically modified organisms pose serious health risks. Is this stuff safe to eat? Should people be worried about a sort of, let's call them Frankenstein foods? Gardening is our future, not GMOs. Given Hawaii's central role in the development of GMOs, the debate here will undoubtedly affect food sources for the rest of the country and even the world. These chemical companies think that they're going to win, Oh, hell no! Hawaii is ground zero against GMOs for the whole world. Last year, after pressure from protesters, two islands in Hawaii have placed restrictions on testing and bans on new research. We believe there's harm and there's certainly potential harm. And, you know, once these things are released into nature, you can't call them back. There's no recall. Mark Ferguson is the president of the organic lobby group HAFA, Hawaii's Organic Farming Association. He is one of the most vocal opponents of GMOs in the state and the CEO of the vegetarian grocery store, Down to Earth. Eat organically for the sake of yourself, for the sake of your family, and for the sake of the environment. Genetic engineering or genetic modification is actually one of many tools that is available to farmers to help them deal with the big problems like pests and diseases and weeds. Dr. Anya Wysorek is a scientist and a professor at the University of Hawaii. We have been doing genetic modification on crops for, for hundreds of years, so this is not really the most accurate way of describing the technology that we're talking about. The best way would be called transgenic technology. They're doing something which cannot be done in nature, and that is crossbreed species. So they're actually uh, taking genetic material from completely different species and inserting it using sort of quite crude technology, like uh, they call it a GMO gun, of uh, putting different genetic material into genes of plants. The natural products industry, the organic industry, uh, initially was trying to, well, well let's get these things banned. Right? <laughs> In the 1990s, Hawaiian papaya faced near devastation after the invasive ring spot virus threatened to destroy fields across the state. That drove Dr. Dennis Gonzalez to use transgenic technology to essentially cut and paste genes into the papaya to protect the plant from the virus. Many medicines, from insulin to AIDS drugs, were now genetically engineered. Perhaps, he thought, the same techniques could help plants as well. The GMO rainbow papaya is widely credited with saving the papaya industry in Hawaii. In honoring Dr. Gonzalez for his contributions to the agricultural industry here in Hawaii and throughout the world. Political will or political clout is not there to ban them. They could, well, let's label them so at least people can see, oh, I'm eating GMOs, give people a choice. If a food even a biotech food or even an organic food has any nutritional difference, toxin or allergen, you have to label it. That's already the mandate. One of the big misconceptions is that genetically engineered crops are the ones that are really modified and DNA is changed and everything else is pure as nature created. 
majority of crops that we use in agriculture today have been modified by modifying the DNA over the hundreds of years, even through classical breeding or mutation breeding or tissue culture or genetic engineering. You almost have no product on the market, no uh, agricultural crop that has not been modified by scientists or farmers over the years. This group of people that have a religious and philosophical opposition to the science. And really it's anything that is they perceive to be unnatural. Our position is, is no, we've been doing this for thousands of years, now we're just doing it a little bit more specific. It doesn't make sense to spray all kinds of poison on stuff. It doesn't make sense to put poisons into the crops themselves. It doesn't make sense to mess with nature. As people learn about GMOs, they go, well, I don't want to eat GMOs. What I find it very interesting is that these crops, genetic engineer crops, are the only crops that we actually t test for safety. These crops are as safe as the crops that have not been genetically engineered. There is extensive studies on human to make sure that they do not affect the human health, to make sure that they don't cause allergies, that they are not uh, being toxic and so on. And over years we have no reports, uh, scientifically based reports, that would show that these crops are not safe. Overwhelming the science supports the safety and the health and nutrition of biotech crops. The testing is done by the companies themselves. Naturally they have a self-interest to only do studies that show the crops in a good light. But research has produced over 2,000 peer-reviewed scientific reports that document the general safety and nutritional value of GMO foods and feeds. Well over one-fourth of the publications are created and funded by organizations that are entirely independent from large commercial seed and chemical companies. If somebody would tell me that they think that my opinion is what it is because the big company is sponsoring my research, which they don't, or this building is owned by Monsanto, which is not, you know, I would find it really insulting by telling me that my opinion is based on money. I went uh, to university and studied for many years to, to do what I do. If you want to become rich, you don't really become a scientist. Anya is not alone. Every single major health and science body in the world, which includes Europe where politically motivated restrictions exist, has concluded that GMOs are no more risky than conventional plant breeding. The American Association for the Advancement of Science states, the science is quite clear. Crop improvement by the modern molecular techniques of biotechnology is safe. Genetic engineering is just a tool. So right now we're using this tool to you know, increase the yield or help with the insects, but these tools can be used to clean up environment. We can create the genetically engineered plants that might be able to clean up pollution. And as we're using this tool in agriculture or in the environment, we got to use it carefully, but we cannot just throw it out because uh, we don't understand it. It can be religious reasons, can be moral reasons, can be what, and it can just be, hey, I live in a democracy, I've got the right to know. If we're changing the way that we operate, we have to come out with new rules. So what are we going to say? We're going to say, we're going to label genetic engineer crops because public wants it. If we're ready to do that, that's fine. But then we have to ask ourselves a question, what happens if tomorrow public wants something else on the label? Only time will tell if GMO labeling is productive. One thing is clear, scientific truth is not and should not be subject to a majority of votes. For Reason TV, I'm Sharif Matar.